Right, a simple method for finding two-dimensional transformational matrices. By that meaning, if you have some shape in the plane made up of three points, which are going to be transformed by, for instance, rotating it halfway about the origin, what would the matrix be that would take these three points, these initial three points, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, for these three points, and turn them into their images? One dashed, two dashed, that's a bad three, three dashed, which would be x1 dashed, y1 dashed, x2 dashed, y2 dashed, x3 dashed, y3 dashed, and so on. It's finding the matrix associated with that. <coughs> Well, that's a simple way of doing of finding these matrices. Given that, if you have a matrix and you multiply it by the identity element, and it'll only be the two by two identity element because it's only a two dimensional plane you're dealing with, then the result of that will just be the matrix that you've got. Which means that if you multiply the identity element by the matrix, Whatever matrix you end up with, whatever elements appear in these places, that will be the matrix that you want. And the method here would be, instead of taking that as the identity element, which it is, consider it as two points which are about to be transformed. The point one zero and the point zero one. So that for instance, for the first one, if I wanted to, for instance, find the matrix associated with reflect in the x-axis, Call that M1. Oh, I just would consider this part then. I'll leave that part there. I would think, right, take these two points, the point 1, 0 and the point 0, 1. Then the, the matrix that transforms them by reflecting the x-axis would have to be this. Well, the image of 1, 0 in the x-axis is still 1, 0. The image of 0, 1 reflecting the x-axis is going to be 0, minus 1. And since those two points are identical to the identity element, that means the matrix associated with the reflect of the x-axis is simply that. M1 would just be 1, 0, 0, minus 1. Now, there are lots of these little 2 by 2 matrices associated with various transformations, and you don't need to try and learn them, because you'll only get confused with the various ones and where they go in the negatives. It takes seconds to figure them out. Try a different one. What about reflect in the line y equals x? Call that M2. What's the matrix associated with reflecting in the line y equals x? Well, if you multiply it by the identity element, whatever you end up with will be the matrix itself. So considering the identity element as two points to be transformed, You've got the point one zero, which if you reflect it in the line y equals x, will go to zero one. And you've got the point zero one, which if you reflect it in the line y equals x, will go to one zero. Which means m2 equals this. So the m2 equals zero one, one zero. Another one. What about the matrix associated with a quarter turn? anti-clockwise. Call that M3. Again, if you multiply that by the identity element, you'll end up with M3. So rotation of a quarter turn anti-clockwise. Well, instead of the identity element, consider it as this matrix actually operating on a pair of points, the point one zero. That would turn round anti-clockwise to become zero one and 0, 1, rotated anti-clockwise, would become negative 1, 0. So that's matrix 3. So M3 would be 0, 1, negative 1, 0. And so on for any one that you like. The only trickiest sort of one would be the one for a general rotation. For a rotation of theta anti-clockwise. We do exactly the same way. 
What's the matrix associated with the rotation of theta anticlockwise? Multiply it by the identity element, and whatever you end up with will be that matrix. We'll take this away up here, because I need a slightly bigger diagram for this one. So, considering it as that matrix operating on two points, the matrix operating on the point 1, 0, I was going to make it bigger, turning it through theta degrees just, that's of length 1, so that's of length 1, will produce this point. This is the image of the point 1, 0 here. So I'll need its x coordinate and its y coordinate. Simple trig. x over 1 is the cos, so x is the cos of theta. y over the 1 is the sine, y is the side without it, so y is going to be sine theta. Then take the point 0, 1, this point up here. Rotate it through theta degrees, or through an angle of theta rather. This is still of length 1, and I want its image. Where does 0, 1, the point 0, 1, where does it go after a rotation of theta? Well, it ends up here. So I need to know its coordinates. So I've got, I'll put them inside. I've got that's its x coordinate and that's its y coordinate. Well, its x coordinate's going backwards, so that's negative. The x is the side without the angle. So that's going to be sine theta. The y is the side with the angle, so it's going to be cos theta. And there's the result. The matrix associated with the rotation of theta anticlockwise is this. It doesn't take long to derive it if you don't remember it, but it's maybe the only one you would try to remember. And it's just as simple to use it the other way around if you have the matrix to determine what it does. Especially in terms of when you've got a composition. So what were those again? It was M1 was reflect in X. That was 1, 0, 0, negative 1. There was M2, which was reflect in Y equals X. That was M2, as well I had a note. M2 equals 0, 1, 1, 0. So what if there was a composition reflect in x followed by reflect in y equals 2? Reflect in x, that means m1 is going to operate on something, followed by reflect in y equals x. Well again, if I was to multiply whoop, the identity element by it, whatever I end up with will be its image. But I'll have to find out where this comes to first of all. So M1, M2 would be this, 0, 1, 1, 0, multiplied by 1, 0, 0, minus 1. Quick, remember, row times column. So nothing and nothing, there's nothing, nothing minus 1. Along the row down the column, 1 and nothing's 1, nothing, nothing's nothing. So it's a case of, what does that represent? Well, it's easy, because that's going to be the answer to that. If I start with 1, 0, the answer is going to be, the image is going to be 0, 1. So it does that. That takes me there. And if I start with 0, 1, the answer is going to be this, which is negative 1, 0. So you have to think, what would produce that? Well, that's an anticlockwise rotation of a quarter turn. So M2, M1 represents a quarter turn anticlockwise. And it'll be the same for the other ones.